Good evening, or afternoon, or morning, everyone. I have a very important video announcement about the most dangerous problem facing America today. Homelessness? What? No. Rising poverty and wealth concentration into the upper rungs of American society? Of course not! Spending nearly a trillion dollars on the military-industrial complex and propagating wars abroad? No. The answer, boy, is marijuana. Marijuana is the most dangerous drug facing America today, which is why the government schedules it and classifies it as identical to heroin and worse than meth. Wait, so where does our government classify alcohol? Shush, you. Marijuana is, of course, the greatest threat of our day. It could be coming for you. Or you. Or you. Or, you know... Probably not, but we'll get to that. What's up everybody? My name is Patrick, but my friends call me Pat. Welcome back to another video. Slightly green this time due to our subject material, obviously. Thank you all so much for your love on the last video. I really appreciated it. Stuff like that helps keep me motivated to keep going in this doggy dog world of fighting the YouTube algorithm and everything else that's going on. So today I wanted to cover something else that I saw in the news going very viral on Twitter was this tweet that is, well, fairly alarming if what he says is accurate. Cannabis is a silent epidemic wreaking havoc on the American family. Well, don't worry, Justin Murphy, Catholic Twitter influencer. I am very committed to the American family. I intend on marrying a woman, taking a wife, making her do all the cleaning, and having lots and lots of American nuclear family babies. Ha! Gay! If there's one thing I won't let happen, it's seeing the American family unit being attacked or modified in any way! He describes drinking the beverage picture there, a beverage called Recess, which is a seltzer, which we'll talk about a little bit more in just a couple seconds, and then falling asleep at 9pm on a Saturday night before waking up at the horror 10am. What a degenerate bum getting up that, that late. The real tragedy is that he missed Catholic mass, he overslept, and you know God was watching. Got an answer to that at the pearly gates. Hey, remember that one time you had those seltzers, bro? And I just want to clarify that in the traditional sense, these seltzers have no alcohol. So we're talking about cannabis, what, what's the deal here? So what did Recess do? Did they take one of Snoop Dogg's big kahuna joints? And he hands me one of these big kahuna blast you to the Milky Way joints, you know? melt it down, swirl it around, and put it in a sleek looking can? No. Fortunately, Snoop Dogg's temporary announcement that he was quitting weed was just an advertisement for a smoking pit, and that smoking pit and this can have precisely the same amount of THC in them, that is to say zero, because one is a CBD seltzer and one is a inanimate object. CBD is different from weed. Consider it like the Diet Coke of weed, but if you're the type of person who thinks Diet Coke is too strong, so you take a bottle of Diet Coke, pour 90% of it out, and fill the rest with water, then you have CBD. To its credit, CBD actually has been shown in some cases to be effective at treating certain illnesses or conditions, not super regulated by the FDA, this is all in its early stages, unlike Diet Coke, which is making you thin at the expense of giving you eventual stomach cancer. So the seltzers that this guy had if you go and you look at their website, they actually had 12 milligrams of CBD, which compared to the dosing recommendations that I put on screen for certain illnesses is comically low. This guy had almost nothing and he's still slumped, slept for 13 hours and is now complaining on Twitter like an idiot. And some studies actually say because CBD is a part of traditional marijuana, but THC is doing most of the psychoactive effects, some studies actually suggest the more CBD you have, the more mellow you will feel and the less you'll actually feel the effects of weed. So this guy's complaining that this thing that literally negates weed is somehow ruining his life. It's moronic. The real crime, in my opinion, is that this website is charging $5 for a can of basically pretend water, but hey, maybe I can fill out their form to be an influencer after I've made fun of their brand. But okay. Maybe this guy who's too stupid to look at the ingredients section of the thing he's actually drinking, see 10 milligram hemp extract, and maybe ask a question or two if that's something you object to, maybe this guy is right. Maybe cannabis is a silent epidemic. So does he have a point? You know, the more I think about it, the more I think he kind of does. Because the last time I went to a dispensary, Ronald Reagan came back from the dead and kicked me in the dick, so... No, the worst thing that happened to me at a dispensary was when the bud tender was slightly rude to me that I only wanted to get the strains with the coolest names. He said that was a bad idea, and I say, fuck you, Kyle. 
My lemon mint flavored joint was not flavored like lemon or mint, but it was a pretty nice experience. And while I'm complaining, I just want to complain about the name Bud Tender. You know, I, I don't like it. It feels like weed is trying too much to be like alcohol, kind of like perpetual little, little brother syndrome. You know, we don't need that. It kind of is also giving the energy of like, uh, a term created at a stoner D&D session. You know, bad vibes. So to ask if weed has truly ruined the country, I think it's a good idea to look at the country. The two states to legalize recreational marijuana first were Colorado and Washington. So today we're going to look at Colorado. Now I know Colorado is not necessarily the most representative state in the country. You know, they bike a lot more, they're outside a lot more, more sunshine, more skiing. Their governor is a weirdo who loves Reddit and they have one of the worst run franchises in baseball. But still, it's been over a decade, lessons to be learned, let's get into it. So before we get into Colorado specifically, a little bit about weed. People have some complaints with weed, but weed has done both positive and negative things. It's a complex thing. So first of all, a lot of people think it smells. To those people I say, have you ever smelled a cigarette? Uh, if the answer to that is no, I would recommend not starting. They smell quite horrible. They, they give you that more visceral cancer smell, whereas weed, I think you can delude yourself a little bit. So I got a lot of this information just for the purposes of this video directly from the Colorado state government because I feel like they kind of have an incentive to tell the truth, and I'll tell you why. Because yes, they are selling me the marijuana in a sense because they're taking a cut of the profits like an old-timey mob boss. But if things go categorically wrong for me, they have to pay at least some of the medical bills. So they kind of got to balance it, right? Obviously, smoking weed is bad for your lungs, just like smoking anything is bad for your lungs. A lot of people think that cigarette smoke is worse for you than weed smoke, and that might be true, but some of the research suggests that they're roughly the same. But what isn't the same for most users is the frequency of use. So a cigarette smoker is generally not having one cigarette a day, and a healthy cannabis user probably shouldn't be using cannabis every single day. So increased frequency is going to lead to worse outcomes, because we forget our lungs are meant to filter out certain things, the world is kind of dirty, they're not generally equipped to be blowing hot smoke directly into our lungs, so use with moderation. Another one of the more reported side effects is memory loss, because habitual use of cannabis will make your mind worse is what the studies have borne out, not unlike, you know, trauma or COVID-19 or alcohol. So this is all to say I don't really remember a lot of the past four years. Oop. So yeah, a lot of the science is not particularly definite in regards to marijuana because, surprise, surprise, the federal government making it a Schedule One drug the same level as heroin and worse then meth has made it impossible or almost impossible for a lot of studies to happen. If you take federal grant money, it becomes pretty difficult for you to do any long-term studies or short-term studies for that matter on marijuana. And since a lot of studies are not the most lucrative endeavors, they need that federal money. So we do not really have a lot of long-term, decades-long, really high-quality stuff. We have some, and that's what we're going off of, but there's a lot of unknowns. But like most things, we best to moderate, if you can. You know, a lot of things in life are personal choice, and that was really the whole point of Colorado legalizing marijuana. The same way you can choose to go and eat an entire pack of Oreos or drink an entire six pack of Bud Light. You know, Bud Light is basically just water, but worse. That Bud Light just ain't right. Yep, we're bringing that culture war back. God, that was so stupid. We really had an entire, like, six months where conservative America refused to drink a certain type of beer, which is not even really that good, just because they sponsored like a TikTok. I, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And now we've mostly just forgotten about it. So you're welcome, Bud Light. I once bought a, a, a pint to be an ally and uh, it was disgusting. And, uh, but the, the jester was nice. The jester was nice. So what actually happened when Colorado decided to make marijuana legal? Well, basically what people expected. One of the main arguments that were made by people who were in favor of legalization was that marijuana was going to be a huge cash cow. And depending on your definition, it has or hasn't really lived up to that expectation. Marijuana use has raised over $2 billion in revenue, which is great, but really not that much compared to the scope of a major state's state budget. But that being said, marijuana taxes make up anywhere from 0.7 to 1% of the entire revenue stream for the Colorado state government, which is pretty impressive for something they were making precisely $0 from just a decade ago. And a lot of that money has gone to things such as school construction, 
uh, especially in a lot of places that really need the investment because their property values are low, they're not really the most wealthy communities, but here's this money coming from the state government to build new facilities, like this one. Isn't that nice? Probably only possible due to uh, the taxpayer, in part, smoking weed. And a lot of that money goes directly back into education campaigns about marijuana, such as this ad, which, although it only had 400 views on Vimeo, was recommended to me in my research, so. People always ask me, Meg, is keeping your weed out of reach good enough? I can see they saved a little money by filming in some poor state government official's apartment, and then by not getting a light either. And my answer is always, I'm gonna live here forever. <laughs> No. They're trying to play it off, but that kid is zooted. He is gone. He is, he's out. He's out. But yeah, according to the same website that put me in touch with this wonderful little ad, uh, youth cannabis use is down by a lot compared to 2020 to 2021, some of the more recent data I could find, from 21% to 13%. So a pretty good decrease, in addition to some decrease of a lot of other stuff. Now, some of this could be due to the pandemic, but the state of Colorado is pretty aggressive about making sure dispensaries are not selling to underage consumers. According to one owner, there's someone with a fake ID there every month, which seems like a lot, probably. Now, Colorado has reported more incidents with people driving with marijuana in their systems, DUIs, driving while high, uh, which they define by a blood measurement of five nanograms per milliliter. See, whenever I do these videos, I always learn so much. I learned what a nanogram is today. <laughs> Uh, so this varies state by state in states that have legalized marijuana. Some states have different numbers, kind of not based on science for the nanograms. Some just go purely on vibes, like California, which does not only go off of the blood test. Uh, and the blood tests are fairly accurate in terms of measuring how widespread this problem is, but habitual cannabis users do register as having higher nanograms in their bloodstream, even if they weren't actively impaired or meeting the threshold to be actively impaired while driving the vehicle. According to Normal, there was a study where one participant could not pass the basic driving test they were using for the study while they were sober, but then when they had 71 nanograms of THC in their system, they passed with flying colors. Yes, the joke about I drive better drunk may be inaccurate, I drive better high, probably still inaccurate because it's just one guy in a study of multiple people. Uh, and while it is totally rad, it is also totally <laughs> evidence this man has a problem. But it's okay, life can be beautiful and two things can be true at the same time. And despite the hopes of the supporters of legalization, that legalizing marijuana would sort of ease the discrepancies in the criminal justice system, it appears that legalizing marijuana has not made the policing system any less racist. While arrests for cannabis possession have dropped over 70%, Black people are still arrested at two times the rate of white people, despite usage being relatively similar across racial groups. It's worth noting as well that even though cannabis is quote unquote legalized in Colorado, there are limits to it. A person cannot have more than six plants, of which no more than three can be mature at any given time, and additionally you cannot possess more than two ounces of marijuana. Any more than this, and you risk getting into an arrest for cannabis possession, even though it's quote unquote legal. This whole situation reminds me of how alcohol was treated for people over the age of 21 in my college dorm. You could have one bottle of liquor or a six pack, any more than that, and you were breaking the rules. And are two ounces of marijuana and one bottle of vodka different? Yes. Did anyone ever really check my dorm room fridge? No. Am I still mad about it? Also, yes. But speaking of alcohol, I do appreciate that it provides another option of having something to, you know, relax and unwind with, particularly in a social context as opposed to just alcohol. Some people are even going California sober, meaning they're not having alcohol anymore and only smoking weed, which is a little bit of a cope, to be honest with you. But hey, what's life for if not for relishing and appreciating the little things we think we do for our health? but in reality are not really making us that much healthier, a lot like drinking Diet Coke. But honestly, much more impressively than that is there are some preliminary studies out there suggesting that marijuana use may actually decrease the use of other harder drugs. One study found that in counties where a new dispensary opened, opiate deaths dropped by 17% for the first one and then 21% for the second. So 
that could be huge in a lot of areas that have really been heavily impacted by the opioid crisis and are actually kind of the ones most resistant to marijuana legalization in a lot of cases, but I have faith that they'll get there. And I, it's good, though, that America seems to have finally found the least bad drug, and also one that seems to make music sound better. So, win-win. So coming back to our original question, is there a silent epidemic of cannabis in this country? No. And it baffles my mind that in 2024, there are idiots out there who are still talking like they're in a 1930s propaganda film. Weed, like sex, sugar, and alcohol, can cause problems for your life if you're using it too much and you're not using it in moderation. I tried to eat mozzarella sticks every day, and it did not work for me. I gained a lot of weight, so I will not be, I will not be doing that again. But I'm grateful that the government gave me the ability to go out and eat an ungodly amount of mozzarella sticks. Uh, and it would, it would not have cared if I had gained 300 pounds. They, they still would have let me keep shoving that garbage into my gullet. And to be honest with you, I don't really think anybody should be taking advice, least of all the government, from someone who drinks two seltzers without alcohol in them and then goes to bed at 9 p.m. on a Saturday night. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Helps get this video out to more people and comment if you agree with me or if you disagree with me. We'll banter or I can just reinforce your opinions and you can reinforce mine. It'll be all cute. Uh, and please subscribe. I upload these videos every week. Cover the news. Cover comedy. We'll have a fun time together. Love growing this channel and love making content for you guys. So, heart. See you guys in the next one. Abianto.